Well, good morning, saints. Good morning. Wonderful to see you on this wonderful Sabbath day. So glad that we can be together. Welcome to those of you that are here in the sanctuary. Welcome to those of you that are out on the patio worshiping with us. And I just want to make sure that we're all aware of the extension of our congregation that worships with us via the live stream. They are so faithful in their attendance, so faithful in their support. And, and yet we don't, we don't often connect them with us on Sunday morning. So it's always dangerous to name names, but let me just rattle off a few that are, that are here so often. The Coxes, the Carters, the Pierces, the Stamies, the Robesons, the Beggars, the Reeds, the Wards. We go on and on and on. But to all of you who are so faithful in attending worship with us via the live stream, we are thankful for you and we recognize you as a part of our church family. On this day, we want to offer a special welcome, a word of appreciation for all of you men uh, on this Father's Day. We recognize that dads come in lots of different kinds of relationships. And so we want to simply recognize all of you men of all ages who have served uh, in important father roles for others. And we'll have some special treats out of the patio uh, in your honor after worship. A happy Father's Day to all of you. In addition to celebration of dads, we want to celebrate opportunities for ministry. VBC begins tomorrow. This church plant is going to get taken over by students and volunteers uh, having a wonderful time together. We have a great group of, of kids that are coming and volunteers that are, that are going to be help leading this ministry. So we ask that you keep all of them in your prayers during the week. Summer Choir is beginning in July, starting on July 2nd. Now, Summer Choir is a great opportunity for all of you who, who maybe think you can sing, but you're not sure, and actually jumping into the full-blown choir seems a little bit intimidating. Summer Choir, there's no Thursday rehearsals. You simply come at 9 o'clock, meet in the, in the loft. Uh, Lily will, will, will teach everybody that's gathered. Uh, an anthem or, or the offertory, and then you'll part, be participating in the choir through the month of July. It's a great way to just kind of test the waters, see if you really can sing, or, or, or just simply enjoy being together and helping to lead worship in that fashion. You know, every year at this time, we are mindful of our students who have worked so hard, have completed a particular season of learning, and are now getting ready to move on to the next school or out into the workforce. And all of them are away, they're traveling, they're on vacations, they're in, in the midst of summer jobs in other locations throughout the state. Um, but we just want to name them now and give thanks for them, and then we'll pray over them even if they physically couldn't be here with us. Trevor Bergman, who graduated from Tesoro High School, he's the grandson of Gary and Lois Wright. Claire and Grace Hirakawa, uh, who, is, who is moved, are moving from Aliso Viejo Middle School to high school. And of course, they are the daughters of Ann and Howard Hirakawa. Garrett Imfeld, I think I saw Garrett actually coming in. He's back in the sound room, AV room. Thanks for that, Garrett. <laughs> Garrett has graduated from Tesoro. Uh, and of course, he's the son of Mark and Nora Imfeld. Jack Moorhead graduated from UC Berkeley and is the son of Steve and Dory. Jenna Muck graduated from Saddleback College, the daughter of Steve and Stephanie, and her brother, Josh, has graduated from UC San Diego, and they are actually in the midst of graduation celebrations as we speak on campus. And of course, Michael Rahofsky, the son of Pastor Annette and George Rahofsky, graduated from... Say that loud. What she said, in Sweden? <laughs> Good job. And then of course, Maddie Swain, uh, who's graduated from Cal Baptist, uh, the daughter of Sue Rubenfeld. We're so thankful for all of our youth. And what, whatever they're graduating from, middle school or a high school, college, some are graduated from graduate school and moving on into, into the workforce. We're thankful for you. So let's say a prayer for those students. Gracious God, we thank you for these young men and women who have been so faithful with the gifts that you have blessed them with. They have studied hard, they have accomplished much, 
And now, Lord God, they're moving into a new season of their life. We just pray that you would continue to surround them, continue to bless them, fill them with the strength and the wisdom they need so that they can thrive in this new season of their life. Lord God, thank you for each and every one of them. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Yeah, let's applaud them. Our uh, regular youth and the Tuesday morning Bible study has finished for the spring. Uh, those will resume again in September. And now I want you to mark your calendars now and call the church office to RSVP because we're going to be having another one of our, I don't know if the right word is famous or infamous, uh, lunch and bingo events. Uh, it, it's a great time of fellowship. Um, we're going to have lunch together, enjoy playing the game together. It is a lot of fun. Yes, we have some prizes, but I think the real point of it is just the fellowship and, and breaking bread together. So uh, mark that down for Sunday, June 25th, right after church. I'd like to now invite you to please rise and join with me in our call to worship. Come, let us worship God our Savior. Come, let us praise the one mediator between God and humankind. Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all. Amen. I invite you to be seated and join with me in prayer. Holy Spirit, fill this place. May you be our guide as we worship, our voice as we sing, our hearts as we pray, our ears as we listen. Please clear our minds and hearts of the distractions of daily life, of thoughts about tomorrow's responsibilities, of anxiety about yesterday's mistakes, and of dread over a sense of our unworthiness. Instead, Lord God, fill us with only you. You are the reason we come together, and we invite you to be the center of all that happens in this place. Thank you for your presence among us. Amen. If you are able, please rise and worship God. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you.
We come to worship, to remember, and to acknowledge Jesus the Lord and Sovereign of our lives. We come to worship to renew our affirmation and commitment, always willing to listen and to pay attention to those whose needs are great. In our moments of honest reflection, we realize how often we fall short of our goal. In that knowledge, let us confess our shortcomings to God. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that far too often, we do not want a savior who is a king. We would prefer Jesus to be subject to us rather than the other way around. We are not keen for a redeemer who has any claims on us and certainly not one who makes demands of us. We have our own plans and agendas after all. We are happy for Jesus to rubber stamp them for us, but a savior who is a king to whom we owe allegiance and obedience, no thanks. Forgive our foolishness, O oh God. Forgive our arrogance and selfishness. We know that everything we have and everything we are is a gift from you, but we are forgetful, rebellious, and stubborn. Thank you for not giving up on us. We ask for forgiveness and restoration as we confess our rebelliousness before you now from the silence of our hearts. Amen. The God of creation is a God of mercy. God is quick to forgive, and God's promise of restoration is for all people. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Now let us stand as one church family and offer our songs of praise to God.
We come together as God's people gathered for worship. We have experienced God's grace and mercy, and now we stand here as a forgiven people. So with joy and thanksgiving, let us share that joy with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Hello. Hey, Tom, she stopped playing. You can sit down now. Can I have all the children please come up for the children's message? Oh, we have a big group today, making me nervous. Hi, you guys. Happy Father's Day. Can I give you a hint? A really good gift to give. So all your, your dads and your granddads, is go up and give them a big hug and a kiss and say, Happy Father's Day. I love you. And you know what? He's going to give you that same gift back, so now you both get a gift. He's going to hug you and give you a kiss and say, love you too. All right, cool. What'd you get? All right. That's so nice. So you guys are going to go to uh, Bible study, uh, excuse me, Sunday school later. But uh, we're going to talk about here in church about Jesus talking to his 12 friends, his closest friends, and asking them to go out and feed the hungry and clothe the people that don't have clothes and put them in housing and do all those ni- kind of nice things and let people know that they're Christians. Um, but uh, you guys are kind of young to do that right now. But uh, you know what you can do is what God a- Jesus asked us to do is just be nice to everybody. Treat everybody just like you want to be treated. And you know you have a lot of choices in life. When you come to those choices, think to yourself, what would Jesus do right now? And that'll help you be a Christian. And then just like the song says, people will know you're Christians by your love. Okay? So my message to you is just go out and be really kind to everybody and treat everybody just like you want to be treated. Okay? So we're going to do our our children's prayer right now. Gracious God, 
Thank you for these wonderful kids. Thank you for everyone that we have in here today. Please bless them with the Holy Spirit so they can go out and proclaim Jesus' word. Amen. Okay, so back there is Ellen and Mr. Scott. Um, so, you know, BBC is all about space. So S Mr. Scott loves it when you say, beam me up, Scotty. Our first lesson for today is Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter his gate with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Here ends our first lesson for this morning. Please be seated. I love how Mason read the first scripture for today. His annunciation was amazing, so I think that I'm not going to be able to do as well as he did. You're going to hear this with a twang of swinglish in this one, but <laughs> it's from Matthew 9.35 through 10.8, which is our second lesson. Then Jesus went about the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Malphias and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. 
go nowhere among the Gentiles. And enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, we just thank you and praise you for who you are in our lives. Lord, you are the God who sent your people out. So we thank you for sending, but first equipping us to know that the one we are following is you and only you. We thank you, Lord, for being here now with us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, today is a day that has been set apart to celebrate fatherhood. And some of you have plans to get together with family for a bar barbecue or some other gathering that surrounds family, friends, and food. When I asked George what he would like to have for Father's Day, well, first he said some peace and quiet. And then he changed his mind, and he said, no, no, nah, I would like to have a nice dinner. And I said, no, it's what the first thing you said. It's peace <laughs> and quiet. So many are rejoicing and observing this special day. But for others, this day can bring up many difficult thoughts and feelings. There can be many different reasons for this. For some, you might be grieving that your dad is no longer here. And some are sad that they are away from their kids or having difficulty being a single dad. And some have broken relationships and are without their dad. No matter what or how you feel about today, know that God loves you and he knows your heart. Whether you are joyful or grieving right now, he knows. And he wraps his arms of compassion around you. And he's the one who pours down his grace upon you. Not only today, but always. It's all about grace. This morning's message is all about God's grace, as Jesus called his 12 disciples. Just like he has called each one of us to follow him. And you might think, these 12 were some special and perfect people. You might think that one must be perfect to follow Jesus. But that's not so. They were far from being perfect. So we can certainly relate to that because no one is perfect. The reality is that being perfect does not even exist. Although many of us can drive ourselves crazy trying to come into perfection. Well, I'm not a person who enjoys sitting down for long periods of time, although there's nothing wrong with that. So because of that, I don't go to the movies because in my humble opinion, you just sit there hour in and hour out looking at this giant screen in front of you. I tend to get restless, among so many other things. But however, when on an airplane, there is not much else to do but watch movies. So that's where I do some binge watching of movies. During one of our trips to Sweden, which is an average of 15 hours, I had watched every single funny movie they had about dogs and cats and horses and, you know, other barn animals. But there was still more time before we landed. So I found this old American-made movie called The Dirty Dozen. <laughs> Maybe you have seen it. If my memory serves me right, it was about an American officer whose assignment was to free some American prisoners from a Nazi prison camp during World War II. The American officer was played by actor Lee Marvin, 
and he had to find people to help him complete this very difficult and very dangerous assignment. That was not an assignment that anyone freely wanted to sign up for, so it was very difficult to get volunteers for it. He had been told that there was 90% chance that the mission would fail, for obvious reasons. So the army did not want to help him to give him any soldiers because they didn't want to risk losing their best soldiers because of the risky assignment. So he got a good idea, or whoever got this good idea, I don't know, I thought it was him, but it might have been somebody else. He would go to a prison to recruit his 12 men that he needed for this mission. So most of the prisoner at this particular prison were former soldiers that had messed up pretty badly. Apparently there were, you know, burglars and thieves and, you know, you got my point. I don't need to ramble on all the stuff what they were there for. Although they had very bad skill sets, those skills were used for a very good cause during this mission. For example, one of these prisoners was very good at picking locks, and it turned out that it was very helpful for this mission. Many of them were experts in lying and cheating and stealing and, you know, other bad things. So those bad skill sets worked out great for the mission of getting the American prisoners out of the Nazi prison camp. So these men, the 12 men, turned from bad, being hopeless and feeling worthless, and turned it around into something good, doing mission impossible. All because their leader, played by Lee Marvin, gave them the right guidance and encouragement. They turned into war heroes. A dozen misfits that were chosen for a, a difficult mission that nobody else even wanted to do. Well, today's text in Matthew is not from a movie. It's real. Jesus shows his 12 disciples, but he didn't draft them or force them to follow him. He didn't even ask them to volunteer. He didn't choose them because they had some wonderful and amazing great faith either. It is interesting how their faith often faltered, just like what can happen to us, too. Jesus didn't choose them because they were particularly intelligent or had some great talents. They had no qualifications or much, if any, spiritual insight. They represented, though, a wide variety of life experiences, but they didn't really have any leadership skills. But what they did have in common was their willingness to follow, and they answered yes when Jesus asked them and called them. So here in the text for today, Jesus calls them out and sends them out. And Jesus calls us too to go out into the world. He doesn't force us to follow him nor does he manipulate us into doing something against our will. And even when he calls us, we still have a choice. We can either follow and say yes, or just refuse and go at all, dig in our heels and remain exactly where we are. And that's okay. But there is true freedom in being a follower of Jesus. He loves us unconditional, regardless of how we respond to him. However, I would argue that our souls make joyful somersaults within us when we answer yes to God's call to follow him, even when we don't know where the journey will lead us to. Jesus calls us to be his followers, even though none of us are perfect. We don't have perfect qualifications, and we might even be fearful of lack in faith. Or maybe we're just too plain busy or preoccupied with other stuff. No matter how insignificant that we think that we are, by God's grace, we are his ambassadors out in the world. It's only 
by God's grace, that we are qualified to do this. When God calls us to follow him, we can respond either with a half-heartedly commitment or we can respond with all our heart, our mind, and our soul. Being a follower of Jesus is not just for certain people with specific backgrounds. No. Jesus calls whomever he calls, no matter how insignificant she or he feels about that. And I want you to remember that whenever you feel small or insignificant, when you feel you have nothing to offer, remember that Jesus uses ordinary people to do extraordinary work. There is an old saying, I hope I don't mess it up now, but it says, never be afraid to try something that we are called to do because we are amateurs. It was volunteers and amateurs that built the ark, and it was professionals that built the Titanic. <laughs> ordinary people, like Noah, did extraordinary work. The Titanic workers, not so good. Jesus didn't send out his disciples. He also told them to go to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. He sees those who are suffering, and he has compassion for them. So he calls us to go out to the lost, to have compassion for them. We might not be able to heal them from leprosy or raise them from the dead or kick out demons, but we can have compassion for them. And I believe, without a shadow of a doubt, that the time is here for all believers to go out into the world, to get involved in every area of society, to help and make this a better place by being the hands and feet of Christ in this world. We might be the only believers that they have ever seen when we help others, when we feed the hungry, save those who are starving, and heal by praying for those who are sick, and actually pray for everyone. Scripture tells us that there is a time for every season, and a time is here. The time is ripe, and the needs are out there. And if we truly slow down and listen, we can hear the cries of the poor and the lost souls in this world. This broken world desperately needs the hope of Jesus Christ. There is no other hope but the hope of Jesus. It cries out for those who are willing and prepared to share the good news of the gospel. The good news that is God's word. In spite of all evidence of the contrary, one day it will conform to God's will and to God's way. You might think to yourself right now that, yeah, right. This does not seem to apply to me, not to someone like me. That must be for people like those disciples. They seem kind of perfect. Maybe you think that you're not good enough. Well, then let's look at the so-called perfect people that were on the inner circle with Jesus and were part of the 12. The first apostle, Peter, denied the Lord three times. And the last apostle, Judas, he betrayed him. So he went to the cross and died. While the two apostles in between held opposite positions on the Roman occupation, and tax collector Matthew worked for them, while Simon worked against them. And yet, this motley crew of apostles were entrusted with Jesus' work of proclamation and healing. I mean, that's pretty profound. Somewhere during their time with Jesus, they have been transformed from being fearful followers to now becoming bold as they announce the gospel to the world. Somehow they are no longer apprentices, but now they have grown into master builders in God's kingdom here on earth. They've joined Jesus in the work of healing and driving out demons and preaching Christ. 
They're no longer disciples, but apostles. No longer following behind, but being sent out ahead. There is only one Jesus. And what does he do for his followers? He steps aside so that they can move up to the front and go out. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Let's go, guys. Jesus not only sends them out with the power to share about the kingdom's nearness, but to announce it by using the same words as their teacher. The kingdom of heaven has come near. And we too, you and I, are expected to resemble him in word and in deed. Jesus was sent by the Father. Then the disciples were sent out by Jesus for the same purpose. See the pattern here? And we too are to be sent out for the same purpose. I know it might sound scary, but remember Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so I send you. These disciples were ordinary and ill-equipped people. And those are the people that Jesus shows us. It's a sign of God's grace. By God's grace, Jesus has chosen us ordinary contemporary disciples to go out and do extraordinary things. There's no way we can do this on our own, but with the spirit of the living God, we can do all things. And all believers are called. Some time ago, I met with a patient who had come into the emergency room at the hospital after a passerby found him down on a sidewalk from uh, a drug overdose. So this person eventually woke up after some medical intervention, and he was expected a full recovery, but only if he could stop using drugs. As we had conversation about what he needed to do to get sober and overcome his addiction versus what he wanted to do, it became clear that this man had many bad breaks in his life. He had suffered much, suffered from a young childhood and up. But was there anything in his young life that had ever given him meaning, a sense of purpose that he could remember, I asked him. Did he know how much God loves him? He thought for a while, and then he said, yes, there had been a time in his life when he had felt God's presence of love, and he had felt hopeful. He vaguely remembered it, but the more we spoke about it, it came back to him. He said he had felt God's presence. A long time ago when he was younger, and his tears came down his face, he said, my grandparents sent me to their church. And then they sent me to their church vacation Bible camp one year. And I'm so grateful for that. And I remember that it was there that I came to know the Lord. And then he asked, how old can you be anyway to go back to vacation Bible camp? And you know, it made me think a little bit, maybe we should have vacation Bible camp for grown-ups too. Yeah. <laughs> he was sent by grace, just by grace. Tomorrow, we have VBC here at LMPC, where children will come to be received by some ordinary volunteers who will do some extraordinary work for the, this week through the Holy Spirit. There will be laughter, music, fun games, snacks, and Bible stories. Friends, the kingdom of heaven has come near. It's time for us to go out and tell the rest of the world that hope is already here. Amen. You know, days like Father's Day, Mother's Day, 
Grandparents' Day. I, I mentioned that one to Mason. He goes, there's no such thing as Grandparents' Day. <laughs> Children's birthdays, other family events, all remind us of the great blessing that is our families. And God blesses us in so many rich and varied ways. And in response now to God's goodness and love, we bring our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. And we invite you to leave those offerings in the baskets by the door as you leave. And now I would invite you to please pray with me. Let's pray together. Gracious God, you bless us with every good thing in our lives. For food and health, for meaning and purpose, for friends and family, for our church and kingdom work. We give you thanks. We also thank you for the blessing of returning to you our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. And we ask that you would bless both the gift and the giver. Together, may we further the work of your church. Together, may we serve the building of your kingdom here on earth. Amen. Would you please join with me in prayer? Lord, our God, we, your people, come to you this day fully aware that we need your presence and your help in our lives, yet also aware that all too often we fail to stop and turn to you for that help. 
We get caught up in the troubles and the turmoil of daily living. We become busy with the goals that we have set for ourselves and those that come to us from our work and our family and our friends. We strive to be loving. We seek joy and peace. We desire to be gentle and patient and kind, to show goodness and to have self-control. And yet, these things all too often elude us. Help us, Lord, to root ourselves more deeply in you, to seek your will for our lives, to stop and listen for your voice when we are troubled, to fully rely on you when we strive to do what is right, to remember you and trust in you when we are assaulted, to mediate on your goodness and your gracious will when we begin each day, so that like trees by a stream which sends down their roots to the water, we might produce by your power the fruit of your spirit. Gracious God, we remember the concerns and the prayers that have been lifted up this week by members of this congregation and our community, concerns and prayers that we now pray for with them. Lord, we pray for all those who are lonely, fearful, or in pain. We pray for those who are struggling with addictions and dependencies that cripple their living and harm the world about them. Lord God, hear our prayers. We pray also for those who come fresh to our minds and hearts on this day, perhaps a family member we have prayed for over many years, or a friend who is struggling to find meaning in his life, for an acquaintance who needs healing, a stranger who needs the comfort of your spirit as they grieve. Lord God, we also bring to your attention those places of great celebration and joy, and we thank you for them. Lord, now, hear your people as we pray our prayers and name those names and concerns and joys before you now in the silence of our hearts. Lord God, hear our prayers. Creator God, you have asked us to be in prayer for those who serve in positions of leadership. Leadership comes in a variety of forms. Leadership has influence over a variety of institutions and locales. In all cases, we ask that, we, that you would infuse within our, our leaders a wisdom, a grace, a patience, and also perseverance as they are about their work. Lord God, on this day, we thank you for all of those men who have loved us and sheltered us, challenged and inspired us. We thank you, God, for the men who taught us your will and your word. And we thank you for those men who gave us their time and attention. And so it helped us become secure in our own self-worth. Help us, who are their daughters and sons, whether by blood or by affection, to honor and respect the men whose love has made us strong. Help us honor our fathers for doing the best they could, even if sometimes they wish they had, we, that they had done differently. Grant to those men among us now who are raising children in this season of life an extra measure of wisdom that they may know how to guide young feet through an increasingly turbulent world. Give to them that strength that knows how to be tough as well as tender, demanding as well as forgiving. We offer our prayers with uncertain hearts and yet also with a firm and sustaining hope. For we see where we have been in times past and we know that you are always with us even until the end of time. Through Christ our Lord who taught us to pray saying, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As you go out today, know that you are all called. You are all called. You're believers in Christ. You're followers of Jesus. And then it's up to you to say, yes. Yes, Lord, send me. You are sent. And as you go, now receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.